Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 5, Standard Position, and the Cotangent. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I can stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. The concept of cramming often has a really bad rap. But what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive. Um, we're not hurrying here, we're cramming. There's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over tiny amounts of elapsed time, Whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems to be an instant, okay? All right, so let's delve into the concept of standard position and the cotangent. But before we do that, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order the complete Algebra 2 cram session. Be sure to spread the word to your friends, classmates, and colleagues who could really use a healthy dose of this cram session as well. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they, can too, they too can order this complete cram session. You'll be um, glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. All right. Standard position and trigonometric functions. When an angle theta is in standard position, the cotangent function of the angle theta is defined as, what is the cotangent defined as for this angle theta? I'll give you a moment to think and definitely press pause if you need to. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to press pause and arrive at an answer, and if not, that's completely fine. Let's attempt this together, okay? All righty then. So um, if you watched, well, you would have had to purchase the complete cram session, but if you watched the first video in this mini series, you would have known um, what the concept of standard position is, okay? But just in case you didn't, let's quickly recap. An angle theta in standard position um, has its vertex located at the origin on our Cartesian coordinate plane. The initial side ray is here on the positive x-axis and um, the terminal side ray terminates in quadrant one, as shown here, okay? And we'll call our terminal side ray R for short. And notice that this um, theta in standard position is acute also because it's bound by the quadrantal angles, zero degrees and 90 degrees. Just in case you forgot what a quadrantal angle is, it's an angle whose terminal side ray ends on the X, or Y axis, and that is the case both for zero degrees and 90 degrees, okay? So again, our acute angle is in standard position. All right, so on to the next point for standard position. And um, let's say we arbitrarily choose a point P on our terminal side ray. P goes to the extent of X, y and is indicated right here and let's just indicate these um, parameters okay so we're going to say that x is about here and that its y coordinate rises to a level of right here okay and when we do that we can also resolve this uh, terminal side ray or terminal side segment 
or now we can see it's becoming a hypotenuse of a right triangle into its x and its y components. So let's just indicate our newly formed right triangle. And if you don't have a pen, you need to exercise your imagination anyway, which is really good. And which is really the purpose of algebra in most mathematics. If you can do math in your mind, this is a really excellent way to exercise your imagination because your imagination is one of your most powerful higher faculties okay so if you don't get anything out of math at least exercise your imagination alrighty then so we established our newly formed right triangle and um, another point that you need to know is that although the uh, x coordinate can have a negative value if drawn in quadrants 2 and 3 but a positive value if drawn in quadrants one and four, as well as the y-coordinate, it can um, take on a positive value if drawn in quadrants one and, um, one and two, but um, it's going to be negative if drawn in quadrants three or four, okay? Our ray here, Mr. R, can only assume a positive value because in order to find the value of the hypotenuse ray, you're basically taking the square root of the x coordinate squared, so it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative because the, the result is going to be positive, plus the y coordinate squared, which it also is um, immaterial whether or not it's negative or positive because squaring it will always make it positive, okay? So this is just a play on the distance formula. Okay, if you consider um, point 0.1 to be zero, 0, and this to be your second point, this is definitely just a play on the distance formula. And the distance, we're not, in a distance, we're not considering direction, we're just considering magnitude. So again, R is going to be positive. And now that we establish these points for standard position, this makes finding all tri trigonometric values, trigonometric values, not trigonomic, very easy, whether it's sine, cosine, tangent, or even cotangent. Okay? So now let's establish what the cotangent of um, any angle theta drawn in standard position is going to be. Okay? So the cotangent of theta is basically the reciprocal of the tangent of theta. But um, let's establish it on its own first. And it's going to be equivalent to the x-coordinate or adjacent side divided by the opposite side, or in our case here, the y-coordinate. Or as I said before, it's the reciprocal of um, our tangent. So basically, we just flip the tangent. <laughs> the reciprocal of tangent is going to be 1 over tangent, and we know that our tangent of theta, or if you don't know, you should have ordered the complete cram series for this um, subtopic, and you would have known that the tangent of theta is equivalent to the opposite side, the side opposing our angle theta, divided by the adjacent side. And whenever you divide one by a fraction, you're basically just multiplying one by the inverse of that, or the reciprocal of that fraction. So if you transform this into one times the reciprocal of this fraction times x over y, you're basically going to get this answer, okay? So as we saw here, intellectual comprehension of this material was not difficult at all. And um, after the short amount of time it takes to complete this entire cram series, you'll be able to answer a battery of questions regarding Algebra 2 and also the subtopics, trigonometry as well as geometry, because these are two subsets of Algebra 2, okay? So be sure to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete session. Thanks for tuning in.